We're grateful that you're here. For those of you that are watching online, whether you're right down the road or across the globe, we just believe that God's bringing us together for such a time as this. And for those of you that are watching online, it's hard to put into words what is taking place in this parking lot. We're looking at several hundred cars. I'm talking about some radical followers of Jesus, much like you online, but have chosen to be out in this space, in this place. And by the way, it's not too late. We got a one o'clock service, and I just got a sneaky suspicion this beard is coming off at one o'clock because of a lot of people. I don't know why you're clapping right now. I, I don't know why you're clapping. I'm assuming that you are ready for the beard to come off. And so for those of you that are here today for the very first time, my name's Ed, and it's an incredible honor to be a part of the CBC family. You'll hear me say this a lot. I needed CBC more than CBC ever needed me. And I'm telling you, I believe that hope is rising. I believe that the promises of God are true. I believe no matter what situation or circumstance or struggle we're facing, that our faith will be greater than our fear. Come on, church, can we just honk our horns and clap to that? We believe that's true. And if you got a Bible, real quickly, what I want to do today is I want to help us continue on in our sermon series as we've been walking through the book of Nehemiah. And if you got a Bible, Nehemiah chapter 7, I'm just going to share a brief message entitled, What's on My Heart? That is, as we get to Nehemiah chapter 7, I want you to listen to this verse. Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 5 says this, Then God put into my heart to assemble. Now before I read the rest of that verse, those words have been permeating and percolating and saturating my heart for the past several days. I want to say this. This is the announcement that Pastor Hutch was saying that was going to be shared. We have been a church that has been operating in tremendous caution, especially in the season of COVID-19, and we will continue to do so. But one of the things that you need to know is that we believe Nehemiah 7 verse 5 is a verse that we're standing on simply saying it is time for us to assemble. We're one of the few churches that has continued to meet online. There are a lot of other churches that have partnered together in these days, getting back together in physical presence, but we have chosen to operate in loving our neighbors, loving our city, lifting our city. We've chosen just to be very cautious, but we are now taking steps proactively and purposefully of bringing us back together because it is time for us to be together. We need each other. So let me just real quickly walk through what we are in the process of doing. This is our second drive-in service. We're grateful for opportunities like this. We believe that this is a viable option if for some unforeseen reason we need to go back to this, this is a, a, an incredible option for us to go back to. But the next step for us in assembling back together is August 15th and 16th. To those of you online right now or you're in the parking lot, August 15th and 16th, I want to get you to mark on your calendar, circle that date. Here's the reason why. For those of you in this parking lot, you can see what I'm pointing at right now. But if you're watching online, it's called Emmett Park. Emmett Park, which, by the way, is completely paid for. If you want to know what kind of church you're a part of, we're a church that believes in fiscal responsibility. And when God tells us to do something, we don't do it. Here's, the, here's what you need to know. We don't do it unless God provides the resources for it. And God has provided the resources through your radical generosity. That park has been completely paid for in Jesus' name. And it's a gift to the city. We're a church that's debt-free. We believe in debt-free living as a church, and that park is debt-free, but we need to commemorate, celebrate, and dedicate that park. Emmett Park is dedicated to Pastor Robert and his wife, Julie, who were part of God's purpose and plan of planting this church called CBC, and we want to honor them in dedicating that park. August 15th and 16th, Pastor Robert and Miss Julie will be with us as we dedicate the park for services. So what we're doing is we're now taking another step in coming back into the worship center here at the Go Canyon location. But the first step for us will be August 15th and 16th, an outdoor praise party in the park. Come on, are y'all with me? That is, we're going to dedicate the park 
CBC style by getting our praise on. So August 15th and 16th, mark your calendars because 11 o'clock service, we're going to now shift in that space August 15th and 16th. And so as we begin to move in this direction, we're taking steps to assembling back together. We feel it's now beginning to be the time. We'll continue to do that cautiously and carefully, putting your safety on the forefront of all our decisions. But if this is a testimony of anything in this parking lot, it is good for us to be together. It is good for us to see each other's faces. It's good for us to be in close proximity. Yes, social distancing, but there's something about realizing you're not alone. And we are a church that desires to lift the city. And we're saying, listen, to anybody that goes, we're not ready to meet in person, praise God for online church, praise God for CBC House Church, praise God for all the technology that we're using. But we believe it's time to assemble August 15th and 16th and start moving in the direction of us coming back into this space. And I believe you're feeling what I'm feeling, that God is doing something in not just CBC, but at the church across the globe. And as we read the rest of this verse, Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 5, it says, Then God put into my heart to assemble the nobles, the officials, the people to be enrolled by genealogy. I found the book of genealogy of those who came up at the first for are found written in it. And what you'll find out in Nehemiah chapter 7, there's a bunch of people's names, over 60 verses of names. And as I was studying this passage this week, reading Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 5, God has put a message on my heart for us to hear today. Have you ever said this to somebody? God put your name on my heart. Or God has put this on my heart. If you've ever used those words, sometimes when people hear, oh, thank you for the text message. I didn't know that God put my name on your heart. Or I didn't know that you did this because God put that in your heart. What does that mean today? The target statement says this, when God places something or someone on your heart, It is a prompting by God that is either preparing or pointing to the purpose of God that could include you. When God puts something on your heart, someone on your heart, notice it's not just for that person, but it's also for you to understand that you are a part of the process. So when we read this statement that's in the target statement, see something, say something, hear something, do something. God's put on my heart three points today that I want to share with you that come from Nehemiah chapter 7, which is a chapter most people, but not CBC, most people skip over because it's just a bunch of people's names. But when I look at Nehemiah chapter 7, it's quite significant that there are three principles that I know are true for you and got to be true for me as well. Point number one, write this down, especially for those of you at home. You'll see this on your computer screens or your televisions. But point number one, Nehemiah was saying to the people of God, Nehemiah is saying to CBC across the globe in this parking lot, I want my life to count. I want my life to count. I want every fiber in the being of this body, every breath that I take, every step that I take, I want my life to count for the name of God, for the fame of God, for the glory of God, for the renown of God. I don't want to just go through the motions. I want my life to count. Come on, if you're with me today, honk your horn, say amen at home, chat it up in the chat bar right now. We want our lives to count. There's a story that I'd love to share with you. There was a church that would tell this story that I believe is a very pertinent story for us. They were taking the offering. Now, for those of you a part of the CBC family, you know we don't pass offering plates unless we take up an offering to bless people. But when we heard this story, I was like, this is a story for CBC. They were passing the offering plate, and it got to the very end of the row, and it was a young man about five, six, seven years old. As he was holding the offering plate, he had no money in his pocket, but he wanted to put something in the offering plate. As to say, God, I want to give you something because you've been so good to me. But he did something that I think is so important for us to hear today. The young man now puts the offering plate in the aisle, lays it down on the ground, gets up from his seat, And all of a sudden, he tries to get his little feet inside the offering plate. And he stands inside the offering plate. And he lifts his hands to God, says, I have nothing to give you, but instead I give you my life. 
When you and I think about making our life count, what does it look like that the offering plate of our life would simply be this, God, I give you my hands, I give you my feet, I give you my mind, I give you my eyes. I may not have a lot to give you, but I'll give you the very best I got, which is me. Can I tell you what God wants today? He wants your whole heart. He wants you. No casual Christianity, no lukewarm Christianity, all in, pushing the chips in, saying, I want my life to count. Listen to this in Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 2. Nehemiah would say this, now when the wall had been built, by the way, the wall was built in 52 days. God still works miracles. God is still moving in our space, in our place. And all of a sudden, Nehemiah would appoint his brother Hanani and his other brother Hananiah, the governor of the castle. But listen to this. Here's the descriptor. Here's the Facebook profile of these guys that were appointed in leadership. That is, they were faithful and they feared God. You know how you make your life count? You be faithful in the small things. You be a man and woman and a young person of character and integrity, values and virtues, that you would choose to be faithful in the small things. When nobody's watching, you always do the right thing. You know why? Because you live in the honor and the praise and the glory of Almighty God. And Nehemiah is going, CBC, 11 o'clock service across the globe or right here in this space. Could we wake up every day and put our life in the offering plate and say, God, I want my life to count. So when the books are open in heaven, my name is mentioned. My name is recorded. I wasn't on the sidelines. I wasn't just passive. But instead, I woke up every day putting my life on the the line of just saying, God, I want my words and my actions to matter. But point number two, write this down. Not only does Nehemiah teach us to wake up every day and say, I want my life to count. But number two, I want to wake up every day and I want my life to be courageous. I want my life to be courageous. Listen to this in verse three. It says, and I said to them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. While they were still standing guard, let them shut and bar the doors. And then this is the phrase, appoint guards from the inhabitants of Jerusalem, some their guard post, and that is some in front of their own homes. Here's what Nehemiah would say. Could we wake up every day as we look at the names written in Nehemiah chapter 7? Could we live our life to where we're not going through the motions, but we wake up every day and make our life count? Could we wake up every day, 11 o'clock service, and across the globe, when we wake up and our feet hit the ground that the demonic host of hell and Satan himself would say, she's up, he's up. Could we wake up every day and cause hell to fear that there's some bold, courageous young men and young ladies and men and women that would say, we're not living for nothing else except for our very best towards Jesus Christ. But that's going to require some courage, courage. Winston Churchill and a very dark point in a period of history would say this, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. But then he would say this, it's courage that counts. It's courage that counts. In our bedroom, and I know that's TMI, too much information, but we have put this particular sign in our bedroom. So my wife and I, every day we wake up, we look at this sign, and I want to read this to you because I believe this is a declaration. I believe this is a prophetic word over our house today. We read this constantly in our home. That is, you were born to blaze new trails, pioneer great adventures, reclaim new territory, take daring risk. You were born to tell an original story. Be God strong, foolishly courageous. Let faith, not fear, be your compass. Truth, not lies, be your guide. Always remember, come on, hear this today, always remember to give God room to show himself faithful. And then it goes on to say this in 11 o'clock service or wherever you're watching from or whatever time it is for you, could we hear this today? You were born for such a time as this. God put breath in your lungs. You're not an accident. Oh, I got to say that to somebody today. You're not an accident. You're not just some amoebic pool of matter gathered together in some body. No, you are formed and fashioned in your mother's womb. God doesn't make junk. You're appointed. You're anointed. You're destined. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Rise up. Walk it out. Live it out. Be faithful to what God's called you to be. 
Preach Jesus with everything you got. Some people won't understand the journey, but as we choose to live a life of character and integrity, living for the glory and fame of Jesus, understand it's going to cause us. This is what's on my heart today. God, I want to wake up every day, and I want my life to count, but I want to wake up every day, and whatever you call me to, I'll be courageous. I'll be courageous. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have fear. It doesn't mean that we're not going to face some hardship. Come on, let me just say something to you. Jesus plus anything is a false gospel. It's Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Which means if I stand up on a crane right now and say, if you give your life to Jesus, you won't face any hardship. You won't face any difficulty. That's not the gospel. The gospel says this, it's costly to be a Christian. It's costly to be a Jesus follower. There'll be people that don't get what we're doing, that this doesn't make sense to them. But I don't know about you, but when I think about my life, Jesus rescued me from the pit of hell. He gave me forgiveness, not just yesterday, but today and forever. He calls me a son, and if I breathe my last breath on this crane today, know this, that heaven is my final destination, not because of my religion, but because of my relationship with Jesus. And if my Jesus can save my life from hell and lead me in a destiny, give me purpose, then I'm going to wake up every day and go, God, I'm not going to let fear drive my life, but I'll stand in faith that you're a good God yesterday and you're a good God today and you're a good God tomorrow. And I'm going to choose to say yes and amen to your promises, even when it doesn't make sense, even when I've lost everything. I'll say, blessed be the name of the Lord who gives and takes away because I know that the anchor holds in my heart and it's true that you are faithful. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. Come on, can we honk to that today? Can we say amen to that today? Come on, I'm preaching from this crane today. And I want you to know this that God's appointed you and destined you, yes, for an incredible journey, but it will not be without hardship. It's going to have some difficult days. Jesus said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. That is, we'll face some trial and tribulation. The good news about being a Jesus follower is that you don't face those trial and tribulations alone. And sometimes he calms the water, and sometimes he calms the storm inside of us. And he is a faithful God. Be courageous. But point number three, not only do we see that Nehemiah would say, I want my life to count. That's why there's a list of names. These were names of people their life counted. Your life matters, but it's going to require courage. Not only do we wake up every day and go, I want my life to count. I want want to be courageous every day facing the challenges. I'll say my faith will be greater than my fear. But then point number three, I want my life to contribute. I want my life to contribute. Listen to verse 70. Verse 70 says this. Now some of the heads of the fathers of the houses gave to the work. That is, sacrificial giving, sacrificial living. There's a story about a fellow that was walking down the coastline, and there were starfishes washing up on the shore, so many that they could not be counted. And the young man began to pick up a starfish and throw them back into the water. And there was a gentleman behind him that said this, you can't save them all. As to say, what you're doing doesn't make a difference. And the young man turned very respectfully to this gentleman and said, as he held up one starfish, I know I cannot save them all, but I can make a difference with this one. When we talk about living a life of contribution, you do what you can with what you have right where you are at. Oftentimes we feel as if that the task is so great that I cannot do it, but you do what you can with what you have where you at. And when you think about doing what you can with what you have, where you are at, you do for one what you hope you could do for all. And I want to share something with you that I'm so proud of. And let me just brag on UCBC. This week we just finished up what we call Love San Antonio. Now we're going to always love San Antonio. We believe that San Antonio is the greatest city in the entire world. And we believe that God's brought us together for such a time as this. Now, wherever you're watching from, if you're not in San Antonio, can I just say this to you? We believe your city is great, but you don't got breakfast tacos. You you don't got street tacos. And not only that, what I love about our city 
And what I love about our church, we're a multi-generational church. We're a multicultural church. We're a church from every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every people group, from every political affiliation. But we choose to simply say this. It's not about being Republican. It's not about being Democratic. It's about the fact that the lamb is the one that we're dedicated to. Our party's not an elephant. Our party's not a mule. Our party is the lamb, the lamb of God. And so we believe it's Jesus and so Jesus is at the center of all that we do. Yes, we got our opinions. We'll be kind as we share those things, but we'll be unified around the things that matter the most, and that is Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's not up for vote or election. Therefore, he rules and reigns across the globe. He's seated up. Come on, I'm preaching today. He's above the heaven. He's above the earth. But yet he's here right now in our lives, in our midst, and you and I have to understand God doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need our stuff. But the greatest gift in living life is to understand it's better to give than to receive. And so Loving San Antonio this week, listen to this. I just got the report that Loving San Antonio this week, our missional effort of loving our city. This week we were able to collect 1,200 backpacks filled with school supplies that would give backpacks to Washington Elementary, Davis Middle School, Lanier, even with Haven for Hope, that is our homeless families that are at our homeless shelter, we'll be able to give them school supplies and backpacks and even our refugees in the city. We were able to purchase 400 uniforms for Washington Elementary, tops and bottoms. There are schools that are, that there are students that are going to show up at Washington Elementary in the days to come and know that their uniforms were paid by some Jesus followers called Community Bible Church. 800 teachers, 800 teachers across Johnson High School, Reagan High School, Basis Charter School, San Antonio Christian School will be given cleaning kits to make sure their classroom environments are sanitized because some Jesus followers at Community Bible Church. And since COVID-19 unfortunately came to the world, we as a church have been partnering with various ministries, one in which called the San Antonio Food Bank, and we have been able to purchase and pass out with various partners 1.5 million pounds of food paid for in Jesus' name by some Jesus followers called Community Bible Church. Why do we live our life this way? That is to lift the city and lift the city is not just a phrase, it's our mission. And we will continue to use phrases like this. Here's the reason why. Because nobody walks alone. Nobody walks alone. You matter here. We're not just a church on the north side of the city. We're a church for all sides. The south side, the east side, the west side, the north side, yes. But we're a church that believes, and this is why I'm talking to this camera right now. We're a church that believes we could change the world right here from San Antonio, Texas. And we got house churches in North Carolina, Alabama. We got house churches in California. We believe that God's doing a work, a part of the CBC family, and we believe we could do more together than apart. But it requires a mindset that we do not be distracted. We do not take our eyes off the mission. Therefore, every day we wake up and we want our life to count. We wake up every day and we want our life to be courageous. We wake up every day and we want our life to contribute to something so much bigger, and that is the story of God through the people of God here at CBC. But I'll close with this. How many of you have heard of the Tuskegee Airmen? The Tuskegee Airmen. If you've heard about the Tuskegee Airmen, honk your horn, chat it up. The Tuskegee Airmen. That is, the Tuskegee Airmen became famous for two reasons. First, African-American military aviators, World War II, 1943, 1944, these stories are told. They're known as the Red Tails. On their fighter planes, the, the tail wing would be painted completely red. They guarded the bombers as they were moving into strategic places of attack. What was happening is what, as those bombers were being, unfortunately, that is, attacked and destroyed because those guarding planes would deviate fighting off the enemy. But the Red Tails, the Tuskegee Airmen said, listen, we got a plan, we got a strategy that no matter what we see, no matter what we face, we do not leave the bomber. We do not forsake the mission. 
And therefore, over 1943, 1944, the Tuskegee Airmen were known that only 25 bombers were destroyed. Hundreds of missions, but only 25 were destroyed. And it was said of every bomber pilot that they wanted the red tails to fly with them, guarding them. But one of the things I found so interesting was the motto of the red tails. That is, the Tuskegee Airmen, they would gather on the tarmac. They would gather on the asphalt. Come on, can we hear this today? And they would say to each other on the asphalt of the airstrip, knowing that the mission was costly, they said these words in unison to the last plane, to the last bullet, to the last man, to the last minute, to the last second, to the last, we will fight. We will fight. You and I need to know that we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. Jesus Christ has already won the battle, but he's looking for some men and some women that will wake up, rise up, and say, God, I want my life to count. I want my life to be courageous. I want my life to contribute. I don't want to just go through the motions. I want to leave a fat den on the planet for the glory of God. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I want my life to count today. Come on, church. Are we believing that today? Are we holding that true today? That's who we are as a people. We are CBC. And CBC are we. We want our life to count. We want our life to be courageous. And we want our life to contribute. But understand this. Why would we say that? Here's the reason why. Because Jesus is our hero. Jesus is our ultimate warrior. Jesus came to this earth, died for our sin, rose from the dead so that we could be more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. And if you've never made that decision, today is the day to give your life to Jesus Christ. And right where you're watching from or right here in this parking lot, if you've never called upon the name of Jesus, call on his name today. It means that we repent of our sin we can't earn our way into heaven. Jesus came as the hope of humanity. He made a way when there was no way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And because of his promise, if you're willing to call on his name, forsake your sin, and turn towards Jesus, he calls you sons and daughters. And many of you have made that decision, but if you've never made that today, we want to give you that opportunity. Would you be willing right where you're watching from or right where you're listening from to be willing to call on the name of Jesus. I made this decision when I was 15 years old. It's the greatest decision I've ever made. And maybe you're here today and you're going, Ed, I want to give my life to Jesus today. How do I do that? Well, you pray this prayer in faith and call on the name of Jesus. He's mighty to save. Just say this to him if you want to be a Jesus follower, to become a Christian, to make that decision today. Just say this to him, Lord Jesus, I'm not perfect. Forgive me for I've sinned. I give you my life. Save me. Change me. For those of you that prayed that prayer in faith today, I want you to know that all of heaven is rejoicing. It only takes one person to pray that prayer in faith. And today, if you called upon the name of Jesus, we would say this is the greatest decision you could ever make. If you gave your life to Jesus today, if you're in your cars or watching from home, would you text in this number? If you gave your life to Jesus today, text in 210 210- 762-4747. 210-762-4747. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus today, it is the greatest decision of your life. If you're outside of our country, unable to text, you can send us an email at next steps, next steps at cbc.email. Next steps at cbc.email. And if you made that decision today, we would love to celebrate with you you got to text us that word Christ or send in that email. But right now, just to let you know that we're so proud of you, we want to just simply say you're not alone. Don't be ashamed of Jesus because Jesus was never ashamed of you. And to those of you in the parking lot under the sound of my voice, is there anybody in your car today that gave their life to Jesus? And if there's somebody that prayed that prayer for the very first time, just look around in your car or in your parking space. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, Would you just raise your hand, lift your hand, let somebody know so somebody can honk that horn. If you gave your life to Jesus today, honk that horn, let us know. Anybody in this congregation today going, I gave my life to Jesus, just honk the horn. Let us know. We celebrate with you. Send in that text message, send in that email address. But to all our new brothers and sisters, can we honk our horns, chat it up in the chat bar, just saying we're proud of you. 
We're so proud of you. We're so proud of you.